Section 23 of The Convivio. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Algie Pug. The Convivio by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Philip H. Wicksteed. Ode 6. Text of the projected seventh treatise. Così nel mio parlar voglio esser aspro. As harsh in my discourse would I fain be, as in her bearing is that beauteous stone, whom, every hour, petrify more hardness and more cruel nature. And she clothes her person in an adamant, such as for it, or for that she arrests her, there issues not from quiver arrow that can ever catch her naked. But she slays, and it avails not for a man to case him, nor to flee from the mortal blows. For, as they had wings, they light on folk and shatter every armour. Wherefore, to protect me from her, I have nor wit nor power. I find no shield she may not shatter for me, nor place to hide me from her vision. But as the flower on the spray, so does she hold the summit of my mind. She seems as much to heed my misery as a craft does the sea that uplifts no wave. The weight that sinks me is such as no rhyme may hold in poise. O oh, agonizing and unpitying file that dumbly scrapes away my life! How is it that thou shrinkest not from gnawing thus my heart, coat within coat, as I from telling folk who he is that gives thee power thereto. For my heart more trembles when I think of her in such region that folk may thither direct their eyes, for fear that through should shine my thought externally so as to be discovered, than I do at death who every sense already crunches with the teeth of love, which, as I muse, scorches so their powers that their working slackens. He has smitten me to earth, and stands over me, with that same sword wherewith he slaughtered Dido. Love, to whom I cry and call for grace, and humbly pray, and he seems set to refuse all grace. He, ever and anon, uplifts his hand, and defies this, my weak life, in his perversity, and, outstretched and overthrown, he pins me to the earth, exhausted past a quiver then rise up shrieks within my mind and the blood all scattered through the veins flees running towards the heart that summons it and i lie bleached of it he smites me under the left side so rudely that the pain re-echoes through my heart then do i cry should he uplift one other time death will have closed me in ere down his blow descends so might I see him to the centre cleave the cruel one's heart who quarters mine. Then were no longer black to me the death to which I hasten through her beauty. For she smites as hard in sun as shade, this murderous assassin and robber. O oh me, that she howls not for me as I for her in the hot cauldron. For swiftly would I cry, I succour thee and eagerly would do it, e'en as one who upon those fair locks that love has crisped and golden to consume me, would set my hand, and then would sate myself. Had I seized the fair locks that have become my scourge and lash, laying hold of them ere tears, with them would I pass vesper and evening bells, and would not be nor pitiful nor courteous, but were rather as the bear taking his sport, and if love scourges me therewith, I would take more than thousand vengeance. Still on those eyes, whence issue forth the sparks which set on flame, the heart I carry slain, close would I gaze and fixedly to avenge me for that he makes me flee, and then would I render her peace with love. Tornata Ode 
take thy way straight to that lady who hath smitten me and slain and who robs from me that for which i most thirst and with an arrow drive thou at her heart for fair honour is acquired in accomplishing revenge end of section twenty three